Welcome to Faith Teen TV, speaking to the issue shaping our nation and our times. Now, we all know that Israel is in full-blown war on October the 7th, Hamas brutally invading the borders, and we now have over a thousand casualties on the Israeli side, things escalating, and almost an equal amount of casualties now on the Gazian side as well. Our friend Kalev Myers is right there on the ground doing incredible advocacy work to liberate the abducted, and he joins us today. We're filming this on October the 11th, Wednesday in the afternoon for us, in the evening for them, for an up-to-date report uh, from his lens on what is happening. Kalev, thank you so much for joining us. I know your schedule is absolutely stacked right now with the good work that you're doing there, but why don't we start by just sharing with our viewers a little bit about who you are. Sure. So I, I'm a lawyer, first of all, and, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I, I'm a partner in one of Israel's larger law firms. I've also started and, and led several NGOs in my life, the Jerusalem Institute of Justice, which I founded in 2004, which advances uh, freedom of religion, civil rights, human rights, uh, primarily for religious minorities in Israel and the adjacent Palestinian territories. Um, I also founded and I'm still leading an organization called Arise, the Alliance to Reinforce Israel's Security and Economy, um, which does uh, um, special projects to, to, to help reinforce Israel's security and economy. Uh, within that, with the, the, the framework of that right now, I've been asked uh, by the families of the uh, hostages of uh, the current war that we're in to represent them in an international media campaign calling for the immediate and unconditional release of uh, all these civilians that are being held by Hamas in tunnels underneath Gaza today. So, yeah, I'm, that's that's what I'm involved in right now. Well, Kaleb, I'm not going to pretend to try to understand what might be going through your heart and the minds of Israelis there on the ground right now, but I just want to say this right out of the gate, that the fullness of our hearts and our compassion are with you right now in this horrific situation. So just to recap for our viewers right now, October the 7th was when Hamas first invaded uh, the border of Israel, going into Israeli homes savagely, taking Israelis, beheading some of them, raping, abducting, murdering them cold blood in the streets. We've seen the images. Absolutely horrific. Obviously, Israel was caught off guard, uh, has now mounted a counter-offensive into Gaza. There has been significant bombing as of the filming of this interview. It looks like there's about a 1,000 casualties now, both on the Israeli side and on the Gazian side as well. And so it is just tragic all around. But Israel needing to invade in order to weed out Hamas, but as you said, the abducted. And so you are focusing here on trying to rescue the abducted. Why don't you start right there with what you're doing right now? Yes, we were all surprised, like you said, at about 6.30 in the morning on uh, October the 7th, um, Hamas militants infiltrated uh, civilian areas in Israel. They came across the border by air, land, and water, actually. So some of them flew over with paragliders, uh, which we've never seen before, over the security fence. Uh, they took a massive uh, bulldozers and were able to take out our, our, first of all, they took out our surveillance equipment and then bulldozed the fence. Then they also came up uh, on, on the beaches uh, just north of Gaza. And they went into civilian communities. They were able to, before our security people got there, unfortunately, uh, they were able to take over 22 towns in the south of Israel. Uh, they attacked a music festival that was uh, attended by, uh, by youth, uh, summarily executed um, around 250 people. Um, it's, I, it's one of the bloodiest days in, in, in the history of... Um, it is the bloodiest day, I believe, in the history of the modern-day state of Israel. We had um, 1,300 people murdered, uh, over 2,000 people severely injured, and well over 5,000 rockets have been fired at us throughout this whole time. So as this has been going on, you know, the population, which is still at home, is running back and forth from bomb shelters. Um, and they just carried out horrific uh, uh, crimes uh, uh, against humanity. Uh, they they slaughtered those kids at the, at the music festival. You know, we you these you have these terrible videos going around on social networks. You know, a father who's who's uh, shot while he's trying to help his kids escape uh, through through his roof. You know, they they're, they're young ladies that they that they stripped and raped and then paraded naked on the back of their jeeps um, as they you know carried her body back to Gaza. 
Um, they, you know, they film themselves forcing a Holocaust survivor to hold it, hold up a gun and pose as a Hamas uh, soldier. Um, and currently they're, you know, holding, holding toddlers in cages underground and, and, and together with pregnant women and elderly and elderly people without, you know, access to their medications. Uh, so it, it, it's a brutal s- slaughter of innocent human life that they continue to celebrate. Um, Iran, which is uh, funded, uh, you know, the, the military equipment and, and operations of, uh, of Hamas congratulated them uh, for their excellent work. And, um, you know, they, it was interesting. They said, even though we weren't behind this, we can, we congratulate Hamas for, for this day of victory. So, you know, I think that they're, they're careful to, to take too much um, uh, responsibility, but we, we, we hold them responsible. We know they, they are responsible. Uh, the, the hearts of the Israeli people are broken. Uh, our, our country is in mourning. Um, this, losing this, this amount of people in one day would be like losing, you know, for the United States, let's say 36,000 people in a day. Um, so, so, so that's the situation. Yes, uh, the IDF is, is um, already getting engaged and in going into Gaza in order to eradicate the Hamas militants and, and free the hostages. Um, and there, there are casualties on both sides. But, but I think it's important in these days to be very, to have very clear um, moral clarity. There, there's no comparison. There, there's no. This is not a proportional war. This is not a symmetric war. Um, the, these people are, are animalistic, and um, they're they're as bad or worse as ISIS, um, which you know is is not comparable to the way Israel uh, um, neutralizes its security threats while trying to preserve as much innocent life on the other side of the of the equation. So that's the situation today. And to your point about moral clarity, Kaleb, I think that that is so critical because there is a real distinction here between the behavior of Hamas, who went in violently into people's homes, ripping babies, ripping elderly people out of their beds, assaulting them, beheading some of them. We're seeing the graphic photos and imagery right now, parading some of the bodies naked through the streets. You know, the behavior of Hamas, as compared to the Israeli counteroffensive now bombing from the air, but warnings civilians, warning the innocent who are in the areas that are being targeted to flee, to get out of those areas where Hamas is, and, you know, ideally even to get through that southern border in Egypt. So a real demonstration that the Israeli government does not want to see the innocent affected here, but they've got to deal with Hamas. And so let's go back to what you're focused on, the abducted. You know, it it's going to be a miracle. You know, we believe in miracles, but it, it will be a miracle to get uh, most of these individuals back. You talked about the children in cages in the tunnels. I can't, it, it's just hard to think about these things. But Kalev, for our viewers, uh, tell them about what you're doing, what your focus is, and how we can help. Yeah, first of all, I think it's important to state that these are not only Israeli citizens. You have, uh, you have French, Italian, German, Canadian, uh, and the United States citizens that are also in those tunnels. Um, as well as other countries uh, such as uh, China and, and and Thailand, there were uh, you know a, a group of uh, Thailand the agricultural workers who were abducted with everybody else down there. This is an international crisis. It's a cross border crisis where citizens of the world have been just brutally abducted and by and are now being used as um, you know bargaining chips by by Hamas in order to achieve their goals. Uh, what are we doing? We're um, yeah, we 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 are leading in in inter- international media and uh, diplomatic um, uh, pressure campaign. So um, we're we're creating uh, content uh, that is telling the stories of the people who are du- abducted, and um, and uh, you know spreading that, blasting it out through through social networks, um, and then also. Um, we're arranging a mass demonstration, which uh, we hope will take place on the 22nd of October. I say we hope because I, I'm yet to receive the final license from the municipality of Geneva. But uh, on the 22nd of, of, um, of October uh, at Place de Nation in, in front of the uh, Human Rights Council of the United Nations and the offices of the Red Cross, uh, calling on the international bodies and governments around the world. Um, to get engaged and to to demand the immediate and unconditional release of these innocent civilians that have been abducted by this terrorist organization. After that demonstration, we'll, we'll be carrying out um, a lot of uh, diplomatic meetings and and direct um, uh, uh, relations uh, with 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 government bodies that that can help in this situation. 
Incredible work, Kalev. Thank you so much. And uh, for my Canadian viewers, I want to mention here in the international community, one way that we could show support is, is to organize some events in solidarity with what Kalev's doing there and his team in Geneva. So I'll throw that out as an idea uh, for some of my Canadians, and we'll be watching how things unfold here. So obviously, in the next few days with the counteroffensive, of the ground troops going into the Gaza, I'm sure a main priority will be finding these hostages and liberating them. Other developments today, Hezbollah has weighed into the battle. It looks like there's some uh, skirmishes that are happening up in the north and also the two lead political parties in the Knesset now coming together in unity and solidarity to, uh, to engage in this fight. And so, Kalev, could you give some commentary on the ongoing developments even in the last few hours here? Yeah, so things are heating up on our north border as well. You have another Iranian-armed uh, terrorist organization, the Hezbollah, um, up there on, on the north border that have been lobbying mortars over our border. And also uh, there have been some armed uh, militants that have tried to break through the fence up there as well. So we have heavy troops on that border as well. And, uh, and you know, uh, what we're likely to see over the next few days is a uh, massive arm, uh, a massive ground operation in Gaza, uh, you know, sending in our uh, infantry uh, to really clean out the Hamas militants and try to save the hostages. At the same time, it's quite likely that we'll need to clean up uh, uh, the situation on our northern border as well. That's another threat looming over our heads. And the one thing that, you know, the Israeli public and the Israeli government is sure of now is that we can't just have these kind of open threats, these swords resting on our necks, so to speak, on, on any of our borders. Uh, those threats have to be elim eliminated. Uh, that's Israel's, it's Israel's right to defend itself. Uh, these are organizations that have called for our destruction. And, uh, you know, I think most Israelis would agree that when you have people who use rhetoric like Adolf Hitler, they need to be treated like Adolf Hitler. Uh, and that's the situation that we're faced with uh, today. I'll say on the encouraging side that um, Israel is coming together. You mentioned the national unity government. So a national unity emergency government has been formed where uh, Benny Gantz with his blue and white party, which is the, you know, second largest party in the Knesset and um, kind of the, the, the leader of, of the opposition until today uh, has come into the government with Bibi Netanyahu. They've put on freeze all legislative initiatives under this emergency government uh, that don't have to do with the war. So the controversial legal reforms uh, legislation that, you know, has uh, divided the Israeli um, uh, people over, over the last uh, you know, six to eight months, uh, are completely frozen. None of that will move forward. Uh, th this government has been put together to deal with the war. Uh, Benny Gantz, the, the former leader of the opposition who came into the government, was the former chief of staff of the IDF. He'll be in a in a small uh, security cabinet uh, helping to manage the war together with Bibi Netanyahu and Defense Minister Yoav Gantz. And that's just a reflection of the, of the current spirit right now with um, within the Israeli public, even though at the beginning of this year, you know, when many people were demonstrating against the, the legal reforms, uh, we felt like in some ways our nation has never been more divided. I feel today that our nation has never been more unified. Um, just tons and tons of stories. Not only have they called up, you know, hundreds of thousands of, of reserve uh, uh, duty uh, soldiers, but everybody in every sector of society is just volunteering their time, putting together packages for soldiers, you know, seeing what they can do to uh, to give a hand. Um, you know, when, when I was asked to, to help represent the, 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 the committee of the families of, of the, of the hostages, I notified my team at the law firm, look, I'm, I'm too old to be taken into active reserve duty, but I see this as reserve duty. So I'm cleaning out my schedule and focusing my life on this. And, you know, I'm just one of, of millions of stories of Israelis that are, that are working together right now to, to face this threat. We're strong. We're unified, probably more than we've ever been. And, uh, and I, I really believe that we're going to win this battle. Uh, at the end of the day. Yeah, I think you're right. And Hamas must be rooted out and dealt with. And I think it's important to say that this is not only important for Israel, but it's important for the people of the Gaza Strip as well, who have been under the oppressive, uh, excuse me, under the oppressive behavior of Hamas uh, for years now. And so I um, want to encourage, we got a lot of people that are watching that are advocates that are from the faith community, non-faith community. But for those of you that are people of prayer, uh, let's pray for the success of this initiative uh, that Hamas will be rooted out with 
minimal casualties and that the abducted will be brought home swiftly. Kalev, uh, I want to honor your time. I know you got to get on to other things here, but for our viewers, what can we do to support you practically right now? Yeah, thank you very much. So, uh, like I said, we're we're doing this uh, international media and diplomatic um, lobbying or pressure campaign, um, calling for the immediate and unconditional re uh, release of the of the hostages. Um, and so if people want to contribute to that, first of all, I know there's a lot of people out there that pray for Israel and pray for the peace of Jerusalem to see that as, you know, a, a, a biblical command that they adhere to. So there's no time like now to, to, to get on our knees and, and to pray uh, for, 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 the, for the peace of, of Israel, the peace of Jerusalem, the protection of our people, um, and that, you know, our uh, military operations will be as successful as possible with minimal loss of innocent lives. Um, so that's number one. For those of you who um, want to contribute, uh, you can go to, uh, to to our effort on behalf of releasing the hostages. Uh, you can go to our website at ariseforisrael.com. We have a donation tab there, so just go to ariseforisrael.com, and uh, that, that any any funds that you send um, in these days will be used uh, for this project of. Um, of the, the media campaign, uh, international media campaign to, to, to release the hostages. I'd also say, you know, if, if you go to riseforisrael.com and you're interested in, in getting updates on the ongoing situation, uh, there's a place there where you can fill in your uh, email address and uh, we'll be sending you information, particularly regarding the upcoming demonstrations. Like I said, we'll have a demonstration, hopefully, on the 22nd of October, and then uh, we'd like to have simultaneous demonstrations in other capital cities around the world. And I do believe the people uh, are already organizing to do that in Toronto. So, um, yeah, so so uh, uh, those are ways that you can get in touch with us. Um, if, if you're out there and, and have access to large social media platforms, uh, please contact us through our website at ariseforisrael.com. Uh, uh, let us know, you know, that you that you have the ability to disperse, uh, um, you know, our our videos and our information through your social network platform. We'd love to add you to our list of um, media distribution, um, and uh, yeah. So for those of you who want to help at that at that level, and thank you for anybody. I know so many people have been contacting me and saying, "What can we do?" You know, we kind of feel. Uh, you know, on the other side of the world, like we want to do something, um, but there is there is definitely an opportunity here to make your voice heard, either by uh, supporting us through a financial contribution uh, or, and also sharing our materials and, and, and following what we're doing. So we appreciate that. We appreciate your support and we look forward to being in touch. Well, our hearts are with you and our brawn wants to be with you as well in any way that we can help at this critical time. I uh, want to respect your time today, Kalev, so I'm going to let you go. Thanks for flagging that a, a demonstration is going to be um, held there in solidarity uh, with y'all in Toronto. So I'll be researching that, sharing that with our network as well, and we will be doing whatever we can to support you. Uh, thanks for your time today, Kalev. Thank you so much, Faitin. We'll be in touch. Thank you for taking time for this very important update and conversation today. want to encourage you to support Kalev. You won't get a Canadian tax receipt, but that's not why we do what we do. Uh, we want to bring our strength to the table right now for this situation. I also want to let you know that here at Fateen TV, we are preparing a significant gift as well from our partnership base. We're researching some of the organizations on the ground that are bringing practical humanitarian aid to those those that have been affected right there in Israel, but also in the Gaza Strip. And so please stay tuned. We'll be pushing out communications about that through our email list. So if you're not on our email list, please go to fateen.tv, sign up for our email list so that you won't miss that. Also want to encourage you, many of you who are watching this right now are people of prayer. There is a daily prayer call that has been launched by a group called Canada Celebrates Israel. It's running every single day right now. You can email our team to get information about how you can participate with that. It is by Zoom or by phone. So no matter where you are in Canada, you can participate in praying for the peace of Jerusalem and for peace in this entire situation. And let's just continue to keep our eye on this. 
this, I want to let you all know that our information source over the last few days has been the Jerusalem Post and the BBC. They are posting updates pretty much by the hour. And so if you want to be watching what's happening on the ground there so that you can be praying, so that you can be an advocate in your sphere, those are incredible news sources. And we'll be doing whatever we can as well to bring you critical information through this platform. Thanks again for joining me. Until next time, take care and God bless.